Good day, I am Mr. RK Khan. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. I will be posting up relevant content, learning content uh, based on the CAPS curriculum. Those of y'all who do not know what the CAPS is, it's the Curriculum Assessment Policy Statements. And basically it's the content knowledge that is taught in the South African education system. Alright, so today our lesson is going to be on the grade, on, on, on grade 12 Life Sciences. Uh, so the strand, the first strand that we're going to begin with is strand one, and it is the life at a molecular, cellular, and tissue level. All right, so we're going to break up this uh, video into two parts, which is the location of DNA, and then we're going to move on to discovery of DNA. All right, so the location of DNA, there are three places or locations where DNA is found in a eukaryotic cell. So before I go on to these three places that, it, that they are found in a eukaryotic cell, we need to understand the differences or the major difference between a eukaryotic, eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell. So we have a eukaryotic, a prokaryotic. So the major difference is that a eukaryotic, so we have both of them have a cell membrane. So the major difference between a eukaryotic and prokaryotic is that in a eukaryotic cell, there's a nucleus, and the DNA is found in the nucleus. It's found in the nucleus, right? Whereas in a prokaryotic, prokaryotic cell, the DNA is able to move freely throughout the cytoplasm. So that is the major difference between a pro prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Okay, moving back. So the three locations where DNA is found in a eukaryotic cell. We have the nucleus, it's found in the nucleus and we call it nuclear DNA. The second one is the mitochondria. And we call this mitochondrial DNA or we call it mtDNA. Alright, so an interesting uh, thing to note about mtDNA is that it's passed on from mother to offspring. So the, mitochondri the mitochondrial DNA that you have uh, in, your, in, in your body, it comes from your mother alone. This is because in sexual reproduction, in sexual reproduction, the sperm, the, the mitochondria in the sperm cell, they become damaged or they become destroyed. So therefore, the mitochondria that's passed on is only from your mother. So scientists use this empty DNA to trace your maternal lineage. So that's a useful uh, note to, to, to take down about mitochondrial DNA. Alright, so now we're moving on to the third location. The third location is the chloroplast. The chloroplast. And here we know, we know and it's called chloro plastic DNA okay so quick recap a chloroplast is found in, in plant cells um, the chloroplast contains chlorophyll and thereby gives green plants its green color right okay so now we have so these two one two and three location uh, second and third location can be grouped together and we call this extra nuclear DNA. This is because it's found outside the nucleus. So this is why I put extra nuclear DNA. You'll find if it's a plant cell, you'll find some chloroplasts and therefore you'll find the chloroplastic DNA in those chloroplasts, which is outside the nucleus and in plants and animal cells, you'll find the mitochondria and you'll find DNA in the mitochondria. Therefore, the mitochondria are also outside the nucleus. So that is why we call it extra nuclear DNA. Alright, so the next part we need to understand is how is, how is DNA packaged? How is DNA packaged in the nucleus? So we need to understand that. So DNA is packaged in such a way that it's tightly intertwined. Tightly 
intertwined. It's tightly intertwined forming structures called chromosomes. All right, chromosomes. So if I to draw a chromosome, this is one chromosome. This is the second chromosome. And in the chromosomes, we have uh, short lengths of DNA. So we'll have short lengths. So from here, from this point, to this point, from this point, to this point. So that's a short length of DNA. All right, so we, we name this. So these short lengths of DNA, that sh short length, that short length, are called genes. All right, so genes, these short lengths of DNA or genes, are responsible for the characteristics in your uh, that is passed on from parents to offspring. So, for example, the your the color of your eyes, the how tall or short you are, and so forth. So these are the short genetic material, short uh, lengths of genes that that are found in the chromosomes. Right. So the short genes are short lengths of DNA. Short lengths of DNA. All right, and something to note is we have special proteins. Now these chromosomes, they are helped by special proteins. Okay, so what helps this, this tightly intertwine? What, what causes this tightly intertwining of the, of the DNA in the nucleus? They are helped by uh, special proteins. So special proteins, special proteins, all right, and these are called histones. So these histones, they help wrap the DNA and they also condense, meaning they make the DNA smaller so the DNA can fit in the nucleus. All right, grade 12s, we have come to the end of the first part of this video, which is location of DNA. Now we're moving on to the second part, which is discovery of DNA. <coughs> Okay, great. Well, so the first <clears throat> scientist that we're going to be talking about is the biochemist Erwin Shergoff. So he <clears throat> he uh, discovered that DNA is made up of, of made up of four different bases. All right, so made up of four different bases. All right, and these bases are called Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. He also discovered that irrespective of the species that you belong to, irrespective of the species that you belong to, the, nu the number of of these bases are equal to each other. So he discovered that the number, the number of A or adenine is equal to the number of T, that I mean. He also discovered that the number of cytosine is equal to the number of guanine. So these are pairs, they are base pairs. So in DNA, a combines with T or, or pairs with T and uh, C pairs with G. But we'll talk about that in later videos. All right, so the, the next uh, discovery was with Wilkins and Ros Rosalind Fra Franklin. So they used to study DNA using X rays and they produced a photo of the DNA. And this photo was called photo 51. Of the photo 51. And from, and from that photo, they uh, discovered that uh, DNA has a helical structure. Okay, so it has a helical structure. Helical structure. So the best way to describe this is that if you imagine a ladder, so this is my ladder here, Now imagine that you can place one hand at the top and one hand at the bottom and twist it in opposite, opposite directions and basically you're going to get this structure, right? And
and this is called the DNA and this pattern or this shape is called the double helix. Right, so that is basically what Erwin Shergoff and Wilkins and Rosen Franklin discovered. Right, then we move on to the third discovery by Watson and Crick. So they made a model of DNA. They made a model of DNA and they concluded that DNA is made up of building blocks. And these building blocks are made up of, for example, if you think of a building, a building is made up of bricks and, and there's different, and bricks are made up of different uh, components or, or com compounds. So the bricks of the DNA are also made up of specific um, uh, ch ch chemicals. So uh, specific components. So these are three components. These three components. One is the sugar. It must contain a sugar molecule. Two, it will con contain a phosphate. And three, it will contain a base. A base. And we, all, we have already talked about a, a bases, which is the adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, discovered by Erwin Sherkov. And in and in the and in the structure, A always pairs with T, and C always pairs with G. Okay, great twelve. Well, so we've come to the end of this lesson. In the next uh, video, we will learn more about the structure of DNA and the specific specific functions of DNA. Please uh, share this video. Please like this video, and please subscribe. Thank you for watching.